Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn here with a rough and ready behind the scenes view because uh, I've been a while since I've done one of these and I'm doing so much at the moment I thought it might be worth talking about some things. So I've got a lot going on right now and it's kind of weird because I quit my job like uh, just under a year ago now so I could go full time with YouTube and when I started doing that I set myself a goal of trying to do a video a day every day and it quickly became clear that that wasn't going to be very easy if at all possible. So there have been periods where you might have noticed if you actually care and you follow my channel where I've been quiet and that is actually usually because I'm doing this sort of thing like building a PC. This week I'm trying to build in the height Y40 but I'm doing a number of things as I normally would with this build where I'm actually going to build in it twice in various different ways and I'll get to why in a second but height's also sent across the new thick cooler which is that massive one it's even got a massive box and it's pretty heavy this is a, a thick radiator with a LCD screen on it and it has um, some pretty interesting highlights to it like for example they say it should be side mounted not top mounted because the pumps in the radiator but that's a separate video they've also sent some lighting strips and other things but there's some intricacies to this case that I want to get to in a minute that I want to talk about and the reason why I'm going to build in it twice um, one time is probably not going to be the most logical thing to do. Um, the other thing is this CPU. So I just recently bought an i7 14700K, especially for one particular reason. Now, um, I've got an i9 in my main machine. And if you follow the channel, you would have seen, I did a video recently, I'm basically swapping everything in my system for new things which included a new motherboard because I was noticing a lot of stability issues and I tried all sorts of things to get around them. Now it turns out that actually that is down to a completely different problem which is a fight between Intel and motherboard vendors. So if you have a i9 13900K or a 14900K or a KS or a KF variant of those CPUs and you've noticed stability issues whereby you're having games crashing or blue screens or frame rate drops and stutters and other things and it could actually be BIOS settings and this is interesting and I've been doing another video on it and I'm actually do, do, in the process of doing that now. <laughs> I've actually got about 10 videos on the go this week but hardly any of them are going to get published probably for another week because I've got to record it all. But anyway, if you're interested in that sort of thing and if you happen to have an i9 and you've been noticing some issues, I'm currently in the process of doing a video on, on that specifically for MSI motherboards. But the reason I bought this CPU was because I wanted to also test it with an ASUS motherboard. Now, the ASUS motherboard that was running before was the Z790 Gaming Wi-Fi 2, the Strix model, and that was in my main machine, and it just kept causing issues or I was blue screening and other things, as I've said. Uh, so I swapped it out for an MSI board, and the board itself has been solid. I haven't had any crashes or blue screens or anything like that. I have noticed some stability issues, weirdly with Fortnite, and also with Grey Zone Warfare, but Grey Zone Warfare is brand new, so. I'm just gonna follow you. Where, where are you going? Come back. <laughs> <laughs> just running into this fence. <laughs> it's a bit of a buggy mess, so it could just be that. But Fortnite being a bit laggy was weird to me, so I sort of went about looking into this. But anyway, in the process of doing that, or at the time, there's been a bit of a debate between Intel and Nvidia because there was basically a lot of crashing errors. So if you have an i9, a lot of people have seen an error pop up that says your video is out of memory, you're out of video memory, the game has to close, and which made no sense. And that was an error message that I was seeing a lot. And because I've got a 4090, I thought that can't be right. How's that logical? And if you've seen that message, you probably thought the same. It turns out it's actually Intel, but it's not Intel that's the problem. It's actually the motherboard manufacturers. So Asus, MSI and Gigabyte and others have basically been putting extra things into the BIOS to pull more power from the CPU or to give it more power, which then in theory improves the top end performance so that you get better performance out of it, whether you're benchmarking 
or gaming, but doing so has led to stability issues, which in turn leads to the crashes and the blue screens. So there's been a lot of problems with the i9 processors of late because of these BIOS issues. The manufacturers have been given a date of the end of May to release BIOS updates, which tweak the settings to go more in line with Intel's recommendations and therefore improve stability. So I did a video recently on the MSI motherboard, how to update the BIOS and the settings that you should change in there. MSI had some recommendations on basically doing that and then using the boxed cooler settings, which sets the power limits to 253 watts. Um, maximum instead of what they had which was like 400 and something or maybe 500 I think it was 500 and up to 4000 on the top end it was mental they basically put it as like crazy high limits so that your CPU could draw loads of power if it wanted to and that would in theory give you good performance but then led stability issues so MSI made a recommendations of using this box cooler profile which they'd set up and then they basically wanted you to use that. So I did a video on how to do that and how to make those changes. And it did seem to make things a little bit more stable, but then also it caused other issues potentially. So the other thing is Intel then, literally after I published a video, I reached out to Intel to ask them what their guidance was on it. And they've come back and said that motherboard people are knocking out these BIOS updates with recommendations that are too low and actually Intel would say you don't need to go that low what you should be doing is these so they've then sent across these settings for your BIOS so I'm redoing that video I'm going to delete the original one and re-upload with this new setting and I'm testing various different things in there trying to show the tweaks so this morning I've actually been doing that BIOS updates benchmarking and other things and I'm going to do that video in a minute but the reason I've got the i7 long story I realise <laughs> um, is because I want to use this in my machine so I'm going to swap my i9 for this i7 because I'm going to use that i9 in a Zeus motherboard so I can then do exactly the same thing with a Zeus so I'll then be able to show you how to fix the stability issues with MSI and with a Zeus and then maybe Gigabyte in the near future as well because I've got a few different boards in the house so I can test different settings and different bias updates and things. But in order to do that, I need to take the i9 out of my system. So I'm gonna replace it with an i7 just because obviously this is more affordable. I can't really afford to buy another i9. It's an expensive process, but it means that I can use it in this height build and then multitask basically being able to test out that. So that's a long story about that. But if you've got stability issues with your i9, then it's probably a BIOS setting. So that might be worth looking into. The other thing that I'm doing, I should mention actually first. So the Height Y40 uh, is interesting in that it's a reasonably nice looking case. I'm gonna do a review on it as well, but it comes with two fans and you can see one at the back there and then there's one down the bottom. They're kind of weird, it's kind of strange because that's obviously an exhaust fan. You've got an intake fan, but it's down below, hidden below a shroud. Now, as I've said, they've sent across the thick cooler. That has two fans on it. So side mount that, but those fans are set to exhaust, I believe, which means I then have three exhausts and one intake fan. And then obviously the top of the case has nothing on it and there's no extra fans included. So logically, normally, what I would do is swap the fans around on the radiate radiator and have intake and then exhaust. But there's only one intake down the bottom. So you have one intake, which is pretty choked, I think, and then two, maybe intake on the radiator and then, and then more fans here. So I've ordered some additional fans, which kind of look like that rear one, and I'll put them on top. There's no uniformity between it because it's, the fans on the radiator are actually completely different from the fans on the case, as you'll see in that separate video. So that's a shame. So I've ordered some extra fans, but again, it won't be perfect. While I was doing that, I had the brainwave that I could actually do something else. So something I've been sitting on for a while, but meaning to get to is, is these, which are interstellar fans. <laughs> Now these are actually a knockoff, basically, of Lee and Lee's um, Infinity fans. So if I showed you this, you might think these are Lee and Lee's SL120 Infinity fans. In fact, they're not. They are completely different. They are made by this other brand. Now these are 30 pounds 
sterling, probably about the same in dollars, I'll have to check, but for a triple pack. So three fans will cost you 30, which versus Lee and Lee, which is three fans for 90, I believe, you're getting a lot more for your money. However, I will say that these feel cheap and nasty by comparison. They're, they're not as good quality. They're very light, they don't feel as good. They're harder to put together. There's a lot of other things that I'll do in a separate video, but the connectors, for example, are a bit iffy. There's no control with them. You'd have to connect them directly to the motherboard, etc. But if you wanted to save money, this is a potential option. So one of the things I'm doing, in one of the other videos I'm working on, because I said there's a load of them, is I am basically going to do a wiring guide on these, but also I bought Lee and Lee, I mean, I bought knockoff Lee and Lee fans so that you don't have to. And then I'm just gonna talk about how cheap they are and other things. But I'm combining two things. So what I'm gonna do soon is I'm gonna mount three of these on a radiator, and then I'm gonna mount them throughout this height case as well, because I think that'll look nice. Now I bought white fans and I'm putting them in a black case, so that's not ideal. I probably should have bought black fans because that'll get people complaining about the mix of colors, but I'm also gonna have a white motherboard in there and I've got a white power supply in there at the moment as well. But anyway, I'm gonna build in that twice. So I wanna show what it's like with Lee and Lee fans. I'm gonna do a 360 mil radiator on the top with these fake Lee and Lee fans on it. I said Lee and Lee, I meant fake Lee and Lee fans on it. Uh, and uh, on the side, and the other thing is they also do reverse blade. So here's some reverse blade versions. So they've got standard blade and reverse blade, the same as Lee and Lee does. So I'm gonna use reverse blades on the radiator and and then exhaust out of the top, and that'll make a, a more logical airflow. And it should look pretty nice, I think, because they do look nice. In fact, if I put them side by side, you'll see on the on this side is the actual Lee and Lee ones, and then on this side is the knockoff versions. And you can see they're basically identical, which is pretty crazy. I think Lee and Lee's probably gonna be pretty upset about that. And they're also and they also click together, but they don't click together as nicely. I will say, Lee and Lee's quality is obvious. These are good, solid fans, well-constructed, and, and you can tell just by the weight and the way they click together, the sort of wiring logic and other things. So I know that these ones will be not as good, but it'll be an interesting experiment and an interesting video, hopefully. So I'm doing that, I'm building in that PC twice. I'm also gonna do a guide showing the setup of this cooler and a review of that and talk about those things. And obviously swapping out this. I've also got a cryo sheet, which will be a separate video, which is basically a replacement for carbon naught. I wanna say the uh, thermal pads that go over your CPU instead of thermal paste. I'm gonna do a video on that as well, but that will probably be combined with a future update. So I'm gonna, I want to do a proper test on this, show how to install it, but also to show what thermal paste difference it makes. So I'm gonna do some benchmarking with the standard setup with the i7, and then I'm going to, with a standard thermal paste setup, and then I'm gonna swap it for this, and I'm gonna run benchmarks on that, so show the difference, show how to do it, and then show the difference on it. So that's something that's gonna take a while. And basically you can see I've got a lot going on this week. The one, one frustration at the moment is basically gonna be having to redo a video I've already done, but I wanna make it a bit more detailed and up to date. And in typical fashion, MSI's literally released another BIOS update today while I was in the midst of fixing that video. So now I've got to completely change that video and recommend a different BIOS update. <laughs> Uh, interestingly, that BIOS update changes the power settings and puts them even lower, which actually seems to have had an even more negative effect, which is nuts. So that'll be interesting. <laughs> so that's an interesting video. And as you can see, there's lots going on. But I thought it might be interesting just to give you a quick behind the scenes look at some of that stuff. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.